All right, so in this video, what we're gonna do is we're gonna go over creating a drawing template. So to be honest, the first thing you should always start with is a template of your own design because it'll have your layers and stuff in it. So we're gonna go over what makes up a template and just kind of go through a few things. I don't have a title block to put in here, um, but maybe I'll draw one of it later and I'll insert it. Because again, a title block, or sorry, a template is more of a uh, fluid object. It's always changing. Um, you're always kind of adding new things to it and probably, you know, once every few years, you're probably going in here and maybe even updating the look of the title block. Maybe you have some new blocks and stuff of that nature. So um, the main things that need to be set in a title block, and I always start with the simplest thing first is units. So I'm going to type in units here at the command line and I'm going to hit enter. Now, so this is kind of the basic of kind of where you start with the uh, template. So um, if you're an architect and you want to set yourself to architectural, you can. Um, and then look at your uh, precision here. Um, but the way we work, I work in decimal feet, so I'm going to leave it in decimal. Uh, but you'll see there's some other options in here. And it kind of gives you samples of the input right here. Um, so I'm going to set myself to decimal. Uh, two decimal places for what I do. Um, I also set my insertion scale usually to unitless. Um, and then I hit continue and this pops up here. Um, I don't use uh, photometric lights, so uh, I can pretty much hit continue with confidence there. Um, and then I'm going to hit OK, because that's pretty much what I want. And then angle here, uh, maybe if you're a surveyor, you want surveyor's units, uh, so you get a bearing and distance and stuff. Uh, or if you're uh, just wanting degrees, minutes, and seconds without the, uh, the directions, I should say. Um, but I'm going to leave it to decimal degrees and... Uh, I go to two decimal places. I'll change this probably a bit later depending on what we're doing, but um, this way I know if it's just a little bit off 90 or not. So I'm gonna hit okay. So that's one thing we add there. The next thing you need to look, worry about putting into your drawing are all your layers. Now layers come in uh, a multitude of different amounts. Um, some people could have 1500 layers. Um, some people could have 300 layers, 100 layers, and maybe only a few. Um, so we're just going to add a few layers in here just for, uh, you know, just to make it uh, look like something's in here. And I'm just going to kind of, uh, kind of on the fly here, create some. So here's my dimensions. I like them in green. Uh, there we go. And then we'll put uh, hidden. Um, in fact, it's called hid. Hidden lines. And I usually use magenta. Oh, what else do I want in there? Why not? You know, let's put some text in there, right? We got text that's got to go in. What do we want that color to be? Let's go blue. Um, so again, just kind of add some layers wherever it may be. Um, this is going to be where you would go through and add them. Um, now, if you had 1,500 layers, you can only imagine if you had to create 1,500 layers every time you start a new drawing. This is why we use templates, so you don't have to recreate all these layers over and over and over again. Um, so I'm going to create a few different layers here. Um, here's border. And again, I'm just kind of sticking to the uh, main colors here right on this first line. But uh, um, feel free to adventure out if you want. Um, but, you know, it's always good if you're a beginner just to stick with the basics. And again, whenever whenever you go to a company or wherever you go, hopefully they have a nice setup of layers and colors and line widths and all that stuff set up for you already. So um, I'm going to make one called Viewport here, though, um, which is one that we're going to do a few different settings on. Um, to change any of the settings, it's pretty much just click and go. Um, but for viewports, what I'm going to do is uh, I usually set it to a slightly different color and I tell it not to plot. And the reason I do that is I don't want my viewport frame to print. So I usually put my viewport on its own layer and put it on this one. Now, some people put their viewport on a layer called def points, which sort of randomly creates itself through the AutoCAD process. Um, and that one, you know, honestly doesn't print as well, but I try not to use any of those because they're AutoCAD ones. Um, hence why you'll never see me draw on layer zero, usually, or viewport. If I draw on viewport, um, whenever I print, I'm not going to see anything. So um, not to say I haven't done it before and then went, oh, but, you know. So again, we'll add a few layers here. Again, just click on things. Um, obviously, hidden needs to be uh, a different line type. So, you know, we can go through here and select hidden. Okay. Um, oops, forgot to select it there. Again, not, not too bad in here. Again, just kind of click new layer right there. Layer filters and stuff, I don't really use them too much, but we'll go over that in another video. Um, so I have layers, perfect. So I'm gonna make my object layer current in here. 
Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go on over to the annotate tab here and I'm going to click this little down arrow or should I say little down directional arrow. Um, I use annotator for everything so I'm going to double click on annotative there. Um, and then I'm going to go to properties or sorry modify and then we can kind of take a look at what's in here because again you want this to be set as well. Um, again you kind of play around with these things as you go um, and you can kind of see them and how they adjust. Um, you know, arrowhead size, I think 0.1 is way too big, so sometimes I set that to 0.15. Um, and it, as you select it and change it, it changes up there. Um, you know, where do you want your symbols to be? How long do you want the breaks, the jog, dimension, arrow, um, you know, jog factor, all that stuff. Um, text size, 0.18 times the scale is a little rough. Um, I tend to stick with 0.1 times the scale personally. Um, if you did an eighth of an inch, that would be 0.125. Uh, but I'm going to do 0.1. Um, I also like my dimensions aligned and above the dimension line like this here. Um, some people don't like that, and that's fine. Everybody's going to have kind of a different look they like. And here's the place to play around with it. Um, if you notice, since fit is selected, this is already checked box for you. You can't set the scale here. Um, now, when the text is not in the default position, what do you want to do? Um, place it over the dimension line with a leader is usually kind of what I like to do. Um, some people want to like have it kind of hovering off to the right. That's fine. Um, this is basically when you move it around. Um, and you can say place text manually so you can kind of fine tune things if you want to. Um, and again, just by hovering over, you'll kind of see it kind of gives you kind of what you're looking for. So if you ever needed to, you can always just hover over it. So primary units, this is one other place that architects will have to change. So you would have to change this to architectural and then watch your precision here. Um, again, I'm using decimal. I'm going to change it to two decimal places. Um, now, I also add a little foot sign for the suffix because I want the little foot sign to appear at the end because I'm using decimal feet. Um, if you wanted to use something else or if you wanted to say inches, this is where you would change it. Um, if you're using uh, uh, architectural, it automatically puts that inches sign for you. You do not need to add this. So for me though, I need to add it. Two decimal places. I don't want all these trailing zeros, so I'm gonna tell it to suppress them. And leading zeros, I don't mind too much, so I'm not gonna suppress them, but if you notice, right here and right there. Okay, I'll actually get rid of them off the decimal, or the angle as well. Now you have alternate units. Um, you don't have to, but you can kinda get some alternate units in there and tolerances if you use it. This is all would have to be set. Um, in your template. Now you can always go back into your template. It's not the end of the world, but just note this is where you'd set all that up. So annotative selected, that's done, perfect. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get out of model space and I'm gonna kinda cruise over to layout here. Um, first thing I like to do is I delete the other layout tab out of it. Um, I don't really need it. And then right here, what I'll usually call it is something um, more inquisitive other than layout one. Um, so this might be uh, border or it could be sometimes I'll use something like this and I'll call it whatever border size is in this layout view. So I'll call it eight and a half by 11. And then uh, I always delete out the viewport. I never really tend to use the viewport too much. Um, and then right here is where we'll draw our uh, title block. Now, since I don't have one here right now, or I don't have an eight and a half by 11 one, what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna kind of put one in on my own. And if you notice, I did draw on the wrong layer here so I'm gonna put it to the border layer. So now I got that red. And don't worry, I mean, here, we'll just do this for, you know, don't worry about staying within this white area. Um, obviously you wanna make the border the correct size. So drawing it the way I did is not really gonna do you too much good. So if I draw a border here and I'm just gonna select here and I'm gonna hit dimensions. Now, a lot of people are gonna be like, well, eight and a half by 11. You know, put the border in. Oops, drew it the wrong way. That's fine. Just use that rotate command, bring it around. So 8.5 by 11. Well, the problem with drawing something a border 8.5 by 11 is uh, we have two, a few different problems. One is, depending on your printer, it's not going to print borderless. Um, two, if you notice, I'm going to put my space over here. So honestly, what I like to do is I offset it in and a half. And I know this will work with my particular printer. So this would be my drawing space here and this wouldn't. So sometimes what I'll do is I'll put this on the hidden layer 
because this is not really going to print, but it'll help me kind of window it if I ever need to, and I can't use extents. Um, now, you might be worried because you're not in this little area. Um, as I say, you got to have a little faith here. Um, when you go to File up here, and you go to Page Setup Manager and Modify, I can say go to Extents, which you're going to want to do. Use Monochrome for right now, and then there's my printer. So if I do a preview, boom, there it is. I like it more center, right? Be nice. Preview. There it is. Exit. Okay. And you'll kind of see when I did that, it automatically went through and centered it. And I have a little bit more drawing room I can actually work with with this printer. So if I wanted to, I could sit here and expand that out a little bit. Because um, sometimes drawing room is at a uh, premium. So I always do another plot preview, make sure it looks good. Perfect. And then I put it in. Now, this is obviously you have your other stuff in here. Um, and you probably have your title block as a block already. Um, so, again, I'm not going to draw a title block, um, but I'll give you a few examples in another video of different title blocks that I have and have used at different companies. I'll just remove their logos so you guys can see them. And that's really all there is to a template. Um, there's always more stuff you can add to it. I'm going to go back into model space. Um, if you wanted to go through and add a bunch of standard fonts, you can. Uh, most people, you know, I have the annotative one selected. Um, I kind of can't stand this text SHX. And honestly, just because I went real quick there. I typed in ST, which pulls up the text style box. And I double clicked on annotative to set a current. And then I'm going to set annotative to something a little bit better than uh, text. I'm going to use simplex just because it's universal. Uh, but this is where you'd set other things. Um, so, and I might, you know, I'll say text height and paper space. I want it to be 0.1. So again, it's automatically doing the math for me. So again, it's going to make the text height, whenever it's in viewport and in paper space, 0.1. So it automatically do 0.1 times the scale. Now, just as an example, um, so if I put some text in at L100, which we used to stand for Leroy 100, um, that would be 0.1 times the scale. So if the scale was 20, that text height would be 2. We used to have to kind of remember that ourselves and put that in. Um, there was a few things that a few other programs kind of automatically did. But either way, if you change scales in the middle, all the text would not automatically change size for you. But with annotative text, it follows whatever the scale is. So it's kind of a, a slick tool. If you ever have to change scales, it's kind of, uh, kind of helpful. And you'll kind of see this once we get into dimensioning because dimensioning is also annotative and it's also using that same text height of 0.1. Um, I tell people the smallest text height times the scale I would personally use would be 0.07, which is otherwise known as L70. And then the biggest font that I would use personally would be L120, which is 0.120. Um, I would use that more for street names and stuff that I wanted to be a little bit bolder and stand out a bit more. Um, not to say I haven't gone to like L240 once um, for street names and stuff like that, but um, kind of use your own discretion. Um, as I tell people all the time, uh, AutoCAD is a lot of art and a little bit of science. So again, when you're drawing your AutoCAD drawing, if I can't read anything in that drawing, it doesn't, even though everything could be correct, it's worthless at that point. So you want to make a drawing that has all the information that is readable and looks good. And that will help you out greatly. Um, and when you're all said and done with this and you have everything you've wanted to add, you would just go to File, Save. And when you go to Save here, this is the trick, you're going to select DWT for template. And I'm going to call this, uh, let's call it uh, video, we'll call it video template for me. Um, now if this was for a company, I might have their name in it and then the template name. And for here, I'm not going to save it to there. You know, we got to save it somewhere meaningful here. So I'm going to go to Dropbox Training. All right, here we go. And I'm going to leave it there called Video Template. Now I can enter description if I want. Honestly, most people just hit OK. And that's it. Now you have a template. So now when you go into AutoCAD, if I close out of everything here and I go to Start a New Drawing, sorry, if I go to New, <laughs> I'm not fully awake yet apparently. If I go to new and I go to Dropbox and I go to training, I can start from this template. So now when I go in here, I have all my layers. My units are correct. My dimension style is correct. 
just to kind of check it real quick. I know one thing I changed was text, and the other was arrowhead, so you can kind of see. All looking good there, and I should have a border. There it is. So this is why you would start from a template. 